Hey guys, we're catching and cooking beaver. We're living on only wild food for who knows how long. Join me, find out how I caught this beaver. <laughs> Adam's getting excited, he thinks there's a double, so let's go down and check. It's always exciting when you first check your trap. Hey, oh, we got two. That's a big one, isn't it? That's a big, big beaver. <laughs> yeah. Big, wet, hairy beaver. Hey guys, welcome to season four of the Wilderness Living Challenge. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm the Wooded Beardsman. The goal of the challenge is to gain or maintain body weight. We've already weighed in and we're only eating wild food. Bear, beaver, duck, grouse, and more. This season's gonna be a blast. So the Wilderness Living Challenge hasn't started yet, but I'm already in collection mode. I'm in Southern Ontario right now. I'm about to go to Northern Ontario. And the reason I'm here is because these trees right now, it's early fall and the trees are loaded with apples. Not a good year for apples. I was hoping they'd be a little bit more plump. These are small apples, but despite them being a little bit green and sour, there's still lots of sugar in them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up as many as I can. And I'm hoping that this is gonna be our staple item for sugars. And then all we'll have to do is combine them with our fats and our proteins which we'll have to collect. The reason I'm grabbing them here is because they're in abundance in Southern Ontario, not in Northern Ontario. It lacks these types of sugars. All right, I'm gonna grab a bunch now. All right guys, a little bit of collecting and we have two relatively small bags full of apples. This was not a good year for apples this year. Not enough moisture. These apples are pretty tart. They're not quite ready yet, but I'm hoping the sugar is more concentrated and we get more value out of them. It's a lot quicker than picking berries, that's for sure. So that's about a half an hour of work. And as we know, people who actually lived off the land, this would have been their job all day, every day to collect and preserve these wild apples because there's only one time of the year when you can pick them. And actually, I pretty much cleaned out those two apple trees. There's nothing left on them. So any animal that comes in and tries to grab any, they're gonna be out of luck. But there's enough crops and cornfields around here. Soybean fields, they'll be all right. I've come to another farm and this tree is absolutely spank and loaded apples everywhere so I am going to fill up as many as I can and we should be good for sugar that's such a boon I'm actually on another farm completely and you should see these apples there's hundreds of apples hundreds of apples I'm loading up while the going's good man loading up while the going's good all right guys welcome to season four of the wilderness living challenge we got Jeremy we got Adam, it's like a repeat of season two. Yes. Yeah. Flashbacks. Flashbacks, because we're actually going to Jeremy's pond right now. Because uh, the beavers are back. The nuisance beavers are back. That's why we got Adam. He's a resident trapper, Adam Craig Outdoors. You guys know Jeremy, one wildcrafter. He's carrying a uh, bear bait bucket, I guess. It's a five gallon pail of slop, he says. So he's going to put that in at his bait site, his, his bait site, not my bait site. I have a different bait site set up through another guy, Rob. So there's lots of players, there's lots of moving, lots of moving action in this one. There's, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going. So Adam's got, uh, how many traps you got? Two. Two, uh, we call them body grip traps, right? Yeah, body grippers. And we're gonna set them up at the pond because uh, Jeremy did some scouting and we found that there are actually uh, beaver there again so the idea this time is to actually start off on the right foot well, I haven't met, have mentioned Zach Fowler is actually on his way he's driving up from Maine he'll be meeting us either tonight or tomorrow uh, late but before that I'm going out for bear at another place what did I miss is that about cover it seems like it seems like it more or less Almost. so how many support guys does it take to starve one? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How many guys does it take to get this going? It's a whole team, so that's uh, that's what we're working with. The idea is to start off with a bear, uh, bear 
and a couple of beaver or maybe one beaver and maybe a bear or maybe just a beaver but definitely something big uh, there's no point in starting off starving so let's get over to the pond and let's uh, get a couple traps wet and uh, we'll have uh, some traps to check tomorrow morning to see if we're actually starting off on the right foot and then it's off bear hunting almost always a grouse right on top of this hill when I've been baiting now the season's open you can you can walk up front if you want. You won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> like nine times have, out of ten. They have calendars too. Nine times out of ten he's been there. What do you think, man? Let's see if there's some beaver. Yep, alright. I'm thinking about setting one between that cedar and the shore and you can put a bit of caster up in the tree and they'll smell it and they'll swim around till they find it and hopefully because it's narrow enough they should swim right into a trap. I've never done it but I've seen uh, YouTube videos. So Adam's just back there collecting some sticks for the uprights to put through the trap to hold it in place. Um, if you guys are versed with uh, nuisance beavers trapping period in Canada we have to trap them. There's beaver absolutely everywhere. They're managed very carefully and there's trappers on trap lines that are on quota. And our quota means that if you don't fill your quota, you don't get your trapping license renewed and it goes to another trapper who will fulfill the quota. There's a certain number of beaver that must be taken out of the population every single year and those are on different trap lines. So Adam's not uh, on the trap line, he's applied for a trap line. Uh, it's, there's a long waiting list for, for uh, trap lines but uh, he's allowed to trap nuisance beaver on private property and that's where we're on right now. We're on Jeremy's property, so we're allowed to do this. Um, if the beaver aren't taken out of here, this whole area gets flooded. So, and that causes a problem for the landowners. So anytime there's a nuisance beaver, it's up for the, for the taking and they need to be managed. So I said my piece about beavers. You guys are gonna go complain. Just go watch another video where they don't trap beaver and eat them. We are going to be trapping and eating beaver if all goes well. So Adam's just clearing out a spot here between the tree and the shore get rid of the mud and uh, he said he's going to put the caster up on the tree and then the beaver is going to be swimming around it hopefully trying to find the intruding beaver caster is uh, sent from another beaver a foreign beaver and beaver are very territorial so they're going to want to try to get rid of that other beaver is that like a big mouse trap um yeah big a big big mouse trap they hurt you ever got your arm caught in one i had a couple fingers didn't break your fingers? Uh, no, but I was very scared to take my glove off. <laughs> you didn't know what you I did? was lucky though, <laughs> because one of these caught, so it was only one spring on my finger. You didn't want, you were scared to take your glove off because you didn't know what you were going to find? Yeah, because my hand went pretty much instantly numb, so I wasn't sure if the fingers were gone or if I just had a big gash or... Are these traps humane? How do they kill an animal? They stop blood flow to the brain, if uh, done correctly. You hope that they get caught right about, you know, the neck, the shoulders. So one of these bars goes right behind the head and then one kind of will go around the chest area. So you get that double uh, grab. Your main focus is getting it right around the head, just behind the ears sort of thing. So this is not a drowning trap. There are drowning traps too, right? That'll... Yeah, you can use a foothold um, and it's set on a drowning wire. So the trap can f move freely down the wire but once it gets into the water, then it can't come back up because beaver's instinct is to get into the water when something goes wrong. So when they put their foot on the trap, it closes around their, their wrist, I guess, or ankle, and then they dive in and they can't come back up for air. Is anything you're doing illegal or cruel? No. No. It's all illegal. I, I enjoy doing it too much to do something illegal and lose my privileges to do it. Yeah, so you're following the law to the letter. So really you want to just keep your fingers. You don't want to grab it like that because if it snaps, that's when it's going to get your fingers. So you keep your fingers up top. We're going to put it something like that. Yeah. So it's about halfway in the water. And he's going to come through and he's going to hit those two. Hopefully his head goes in the center and his shoulders will push it. This bar is going to come down right around the back of his head and it'll sandwich him.
So, uh, so Adam's got some uh, castor scent so from an, a foreign beaver. He's put it up on the tree. So the beaver that's uh, down in the water is actually never going to find the foreign beaver, but it's going to be looking around for the scent of the beaver to figure out what's going on, why there's a foreign smell. So he set it up here and the trap is down there. So the beaver is going to go on to go around that tree over and over again to try to figure out where the foreign beaver is at. Go through the trap and that'll be it. Um, only problem is, is uh, Jeremy spots a couple of uh, otters over there. So we might be eating otter instead of beaver and I've heard otters not so good. All right, so Adam's going to do a little bit of a different set here. He's got a couple uh, tree branches in there and that's going to help direct the beaver in. He's going to break the dam and that's going to allow the water to come out. And uh, beaver are really attuned to the sound of running water. And they've actually done experiments where they've taken uh, audio recordings of water sounds and they've just played it non-stop. And what the beavers do is actually just try to cover the, uh, the audio playing device completely until it just stops making any sound. So they've come back and they've seen their, you know, their, their players just completely buried. So we know that uh, beavers don't actually know what they're doing. They just do it. So they're just trying to stop the sound of running water. So we're going to trick them and we're going to break the dam here and uh, put another trap here. So when the beaver swims through to inspect it, it's going to get caught. So that's going to piss the beaver off. Yeah, we'll get a bit of flow going through. That's pretty much all you need. No, you just pissed the beaver off. Alrighty, so that's it. That's uh, step number one. We set some giant rodent traps, Canadian style. We're just gonna come up here. We'll check out Jeremy's bear baiting site. And then I'm gonna skip off to mine after that. And then we're gonna meet back up tomorrow morning. Adam's gonna come back out. Zach should be here. And we can check those traps. So Jeremy's taking out the trash. Moldy bread. Food my kids didn't eat. Crust that nobody wants to eat. Alright, I know you guys hate bear baiting. You guys think we should just go off in the woods and find a bear and shoot it. Can you go off in the woods and find a bear and shoot it? Uh, Could you reliably? I doubt it. No, you, you can't. If you read the historical stuff, they just went out and found where they were sleeping. <laughs> Hibernating. Right? Yeah, they went, yeah, they went in their dens the and killed them in the winter while they were sleeping. So, a couple of northern boys here. Count me as a third. Um, you don't see bears in the woods. You find a black object in the woods. There's no places that are just open where a bear might appear. You might get lucky hunting a field or something like that. But this is how it's done. This is how we manage our bear population. If we don't manage our bear population like this, then we have bear problems. And there's, I think the estimated population was 50,000 or something in Ontario, which is a lot. Does that sound right? 50,000? 350,000? Maybe something like that. 400,000? Yeah, it's a, you think that many? Yeah. Is it that many? It's hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah. There's a lot of bears. There's a bear in Jeremy's backyard now, aside from the bear he already shot. So there's no shortage of bears. Do you guys think that bears are almost extinct? Beavers are almost extinct? They're, they're not. Are beavers almost extinct? No. <laughs> are they close? No. Are they threatened? No. No. <laughs> but but close. they are they are declining because we're protecting wolves and coyotes in Ontario. Yeah. And something's gonna suffer. Yeah, right. Something's gotta go. So pick and choose guys. You wanna protect the wolves? You wanna protect the beavers? Or do you wanna protect the trees? You can't protect all of them. One of them's gotta go. So we're gonna make use of these ones because this is a resource to us. Instead of purchasing a cow from the store or a pig or a chicken, we're gonna eat bear. So I was out less than 20 minutes and sitting up there and I heard the bear come in around behind me. So when I looked over my shoulder, it was crossing in around behind the stand. And then it came out to the side and it came through literally where we're standing. So I was sitting right there, like I could have jumped on that bear's back and he was stopped right here. And then just walked over to the bait pile. And they can find that on your channel, One Wild Crafter? Yep. I'll link it, maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'll link it. Subscribe or not, I don't care. Yeah, and I'll link your Unsub. channel. Unsub. <laughs> I'm going to link up uh, Adam Craig, you guys can check out what he does. He does uh, homesteading, trapping, fishing, hunting, 
the whole outdoor work. All right, guys, it's uh, second day here. Adam's come back. Uh, as per the requirements, we're not actually allowed to touch any of the traps, um, just for legal reasons. So tampering with somebody else's uh, trap line or traps or anything like that is it's not legal. So if you guys don't like trapping and you think there's something wrong with it, don't touch somebody else's traps because that can get you in a lot of trouble. So uh, yeah, Adam's gonna come back. We're gonna check the traps and see what's up. So we had two traps set last night, so hopefully we don't have an otter. But uh, if we do have an otter, we're gonna eat it. Adam thinks they taste like fish. That's what I've been told. I've never had one, but I fleshed one out and they kind of stink like fish. Yeah, they, they definitely have that odor. smell like fish, so they probably taste like, they're fish eaters, so they would probably have that fish taste. <laughs> Adam's getting excited. He thinks there's a double, so let's go down and check. It's always exciting when you first check your traps. There's one. And then uh, Adam's going to check. That's the the dam break one. That was always almost always a guarantee. Adam's. That one's moved. This one looks a little more manageable than the one from last year. Hey, right, we got two. That's there we go. One. That's a big one, isn't it? That's a big, big beaver. <laughs> yeah. Big wet hairy beaver. Yeah. Nice job. And that's a perfect catch. That's what we we're talking about. That's just exactly where you want it. Maybe a bit further up, but it's right behind the shoulders. The suitcase catch would have been if this head was here. So you'd have one of these bars here and another one back here. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. All right, I got to get rid of this camera. It is raining. We're going to pull these guys up in the bush. That's what success looks like, boys. Adam's got number two, and he's doing it the right way, over the back. All right, guys, so we're just in the shop back here. Um, we're using, we're putting out all the stops this year. It's uh, raining outside, so, you know, for the sake of the camera, it would be really cool to actually go up in the wilderness and film it. But we're on private property, we're on Jeremy's property, as I've been saying. Uh, we've got our two beaver here now. And yeah, I mean, I guess the idea you guys would have in your minds of living in the wilderness is like you'd actually just go out in the middle of the wild, but you can't trap in the middle of the wild. We're not allowed to trap in the middle of the wild, you know, unless we had a trap line to do this on. So we're doing it where we, where we have access to. So I'll take you inside and I'll show you, um, we're using the barn cause it's raining. So we've got, uh, got a bear hanging here. In case you're wondering exactly Fowler's still not here yet. So he's missing all the action. And Adam's gonna keep the fur from the beaver. So he's actually working on it here. I wouldn't trust myself to do it properly. So there's Adam, say hi. Hey guys. So he's gonna do it properly so that it's something that he can sell or keep and make use of. And Jeremy's gonna keep the uh, bear hide here and he's gonna make a rug out of it or something, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's already got one uh, down there being salted so he's just gonna add another one to the pile and make use of both of those i can't make use of them with uh the project that we have going on right now so once that gets here then uh we're gonna head off to the wilderness the real wilderness and then continue our uh whatever five six seven more days of living off wild foods all right guys so i just cut up the beaver the front half the torso and that's gonna end up in the pot tonight let it simmer after we eat what we want to eat um, the reason for that is obviously if we put it in now, it's not going to be cooked and then it's not going to render down. We want to have a meal ready for breakfast. There's always some prep work when we make our beaver stew. So we'll pull, uh, pull this out. You can't, I mean, you could try to eat it like that. It's just better to actually break it up in pieces. That's like eating lard, straight up. I'm gonna stuck and chew on it and let those oils melt. You don't wanna swallow a globule of fat straight up. Probably gonna go right through you. But melting it like this was a perfect way. And then just add a bit of meat and mix that together. 
I'll mix that together and it's all good.